Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome in general if you're new. If you're coming over here for my mops group, I hope you will subscribe to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about meal planning. If you're new to meal planning or don't have a meal plan or meal planning scares you, it's probably because you are trying to fit your life, which is square into the circle of meal planning. It just won't fit. My approach to meal planning is taking the circle of meal planning and fitting it into your life. Meal planning is not taking what somebody says works for them and doing it exactly for you because everybody's life is different, budgets, schedules, taste preference, and it's not a one size fits all thing. So to me, meal planning is taking what works for my family, having a system and sticking to that so that if there's less stress at dinner time, you feel prepared, you're eating healthier meals and you're saving money. So I've taken inspiration from a few different people and combined them into my own plan. I've taken budgeting tips from financial gurus such as Jordan Page, the versatility that Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone offers, the deliciousness of Pioneer Woman, I love her, and the resourcefulness from the show that I watched when I was 12 years old called Quick Fix Meals with Robin Miller. So I've broken my meal planning up into a few tips. I hope it comes across to you. I have so many ideas in my head and I was trying to organize them into something that made sense and I could deliver in an organized fashion and <laughs> I hope it comes across that way. What Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone said was she tries to think about how her grandparents cooked. They did not make bacon wrapped, pesto stuffed pork tenderloin with a peppercorn gravy and these elaborate sides. While that sounds really great and I may try to make that sometime, on an everyday basis, this is just not practical for me in this season of my life. I'm a busy mom and dinner seems to be my kids fussy time so I try to make that as painless as possible. But keeping it simple does not have to be frozen french fries and chicken nuggets. So for me, I try to stick to what I know. I have about a month worth of recipes memorized and I just rotate them throughout the month, each month. And I also kind of change up what I make versus summer and winter and what's in season and what's not. But the point is it's versatile and I always have the pantry staples on hand or other ingredients can easily be substituted. When I think of back to the basics, I think of easy sides. So I always have a bunch of broccoli, green beans, corn, Brussels sprouts. I also always have quinoa and rice. All of these things are easy to have on hand in your pantry or freezer and they're fast to whip up. Okay, my second tip is to be resourceful. I mentioned about Jordan Page being a financial budgeting expert. And what she suggests is shopping your pantry, fridge, and freezers before you even look at recipes on the internet or in your cookbooks. So for example, say my potatoes need to be used up and I just got a quarter of a beef cow so I have a lot of hamburger. To me, the first thing that comes to mind is shepherd's pie. But shepherd's pie has a bunch of different components to it and I like to be resourceful with not only my food but my time so I will make that probably later in the week and I'll deconstruct it from there. The top of shepherd's pie is usually mashed potatoes. So maybe a few nights before that, I will make a pot roast, which doesn't take very much prep time at all, be right before dinner. And I'll make mashed potatoes with that and maybe throw in some roasted vegetables with the pot roast since the oven's already on. And the shepherd's pie has ground beef in it. So how can I utilize my time making the ground beef? I think of tacos. So what I'll do is brown a bunch of ground beef, saving me time later in the week when I'm putting together the shepherd's pie, but I also have tacos that night. I hope this is making sense. So since all of those are beef dishes, I'm gonna use my filler meals as chicken to mix it up a little bit. Maybe I'll make chicken alfredo later in the week. And maybe the first day I'll make chicken and rice soup so then I can have that leftover chicken for the Alfredo and also I can make extra rice and use the rice in the tacos as more of like a burrito. And then one night we always have leftovers and then one night we always have homemade pizza. 
I have a couple other videos on my YouTube channel of resourceful meal planning, so be sure to check those out as well. And then boom, your whole week is planned out and you can save your time because you're doing some of the prep work earlier and throughout the week. I hope that made sense. And that's exactly what this show I watched when I was 12 years old called Quick Fix Meals with Robin Miller, she did. She say she did a whole roast chicken earlier in the week. She'll use that chicken throughout the week. What I love about doing this is you can adjust the portions to your family size and you're saving so much time. With this method of meal planning, it's kind of hard to determine how much leftovers I'll have because Sometimes your kids will eat a whole bunch and sometimes they won't eat anything. So if I run into the problem where it's not quite enough to make my next meal, I'll bulk it up with cheaper ingredients. Such as a thing I like to do is if I have leftover pork chops, I'll like to make a pork fried rice stir fry. But sometimes I only have one pork chop and I can make an entire meal out of that. I boost the protein by adding eggs into the pork fried rice mixture, and the eggs are so much cheaper compared to the pork, but you're still getting all the nutrients you need and it's a very filling meal that everyone will love. I also do this with black beans if I have something with ground beef in it. Black beans are a great way to add substance and protein and nutrients into your meals without breaking the bank. I'll also do this by adding a lot more vegetables into the meal, like say in the chicken alfredo examples, maybe I don't have a lot of chicken breast left over. I'll just throw in a, more broccoli and nobody will ever know. Okay, so my next tip is plan ahead or prep ahead. And this kind of goes into the one that we just mentioned before, but for me, this mainly applies for right when I get home from the grocery store. When I first bring in that bag of groceries that has my produce in it, like my fruits, I will immediately soak that in the sink while I'm unloading the other groceries. Then by the time the groceries are unloaded, all of those fruits and vegetables are completely clean and I will have time to prep them. What I mean by prep is I cut up everything into the size that I'm going to use it or eat it in. Because what do you go for when you're looking in your fridge? Would you rather eat a whole head of cauliflower or you can just snack on the individual bite size pieces? I find myself picking healthier options for my kids and my snacks, and I am more likely to use up everything that I have purchased. Because honestly, who wants to whip out the cutting board and knife every single time you want something to eat? It also saves money by not buying those expensive containers of pre-cut vegetables or fruit. What I will also do is ground a bunch of ground beef, and then you can even freeze the cooked brown beef in the size that you would like, for my family, I freeze it in one pound quart freezer bags, and that's just an easy thing ready to go in your freezer for when you need it. I will do a similar thing with chicken. When I get home from the grocery store, I'll throw a bunch of chicken breasts into the crock pot because a lot of the recipes I use calls for shredded chicken. I think a lot of people forget that you can freeze cooked meat. The chicken breasts that I would not put in the crock pot, I would put in a freezer bag with a marinade and freeze it that way. Another thing I'll do is make a whole bunch of meatballs. Then it's so easy and ready to go for a quick meal. Another thing I like to do is if I'm making something that can easily be doubled and frozen, I will make two. I'm doing the same amount of dishes. It doesn't take really much more time at all. And then I'll have a meal for now and later. A little trick I like to do if I'm doing this is I will line my nine by 13 pan, which is what I normally freeze something in with foil and put the dish like lasagna or scalloped potatoes in there, cover the top with foil, freeze it, and once it's frozen solid, I'll actually take the wrapped in foil meal and maybe wrap it another time in foil, and then my pan is free, and when I'm ready to use it, I'll put that big hunk of food back into the nine by 13 pan that fits perfectly and bake it that way. I love this because my pans are not constantly in the freezer and I'm also not using a bunch of those expensive aluminum pans. Another thing I like to do to plan ahead is I always have something thawing in my refrigerator. For me, the protein is what my meals are mostly like based off of and that's a jumping off point for me. So I always have a protein thawing in my refrigerator. My third helpful tip for meal planning is to stay organized. Everything must have a place or else you'll forget you have it 
or it won't get used particularly in your refrigerator, in your pantry, in your freezer, so that you know what you have and what needs to be used. Shift the old things to the front. Make the items that you need to use the fastest in your refrigerator at eye level, so that's the first thing that you see when you open up your refrigerator. If you can, I like to keep a single row in my refrigerator of all of my items so that something doesn't get lost in the back and I never end up using it. My last meal planning tip is to have a backup plan. Life happens, you might not always get to make the meal you had intended to. I have two meals that are my go-to backup plans that take no thaw time and are ready to go when I'm ready to make something. My first one is I take good quality canned salmon, make little salmon patties with breadcrumbs, an onion, and an egg, and I always have those things on hand and I'll just make some rice or quinoa and throw in a frozen vegetable with that. And dinner's ready in 15 minutes with no prep time. My other go-to meal is canned venison, which I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical about, but it's so handy and tastes so delicious. And I'll just make like a little gravy with that and put it over rice or noodles. And I like to serve this with peas. Another go-to could be black bean and rice burritos or breakfast for dinner is always a favorite. Having a backup plan saves you time from running to the store last minute to get a few items to make something easy or buying something at a restaurant on the way home. Well guys, I hope this made sense to you. I hope you learned something from it and I hope that I inspired you to save money on your grocery bill and gave you a few different ideas for things you can incorporate into your new meal plan. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.